last topic for this week is the electrocardiogram, which is also called ECG or EKG. K is German, um, also stands for cardiac, and oftentimes EKG is more clear because ECG sounds more like EEG, which is um, electroencephalogram. So basically, unfortunately, both are used. ECG and EKG both refer to a um, view of the electrical activity of the heart. So you may have seen something like this. This is showing these traces here that correspond to electrical activity of the heart. And so I wanna start with actually a couple really important things about the EKG before we dive into the components of it. One is that it's a measure, it's not a measure of individual action potentials. So it's not individual action potentials. These kind of look like depolarization, repolarization across a membrane, um, but it's, it's not. This is electrical activity at the skin across the heart muscle. So it's a summation of electrical activities in the heart, not individual action potentials. Two, it's electrical activity, right? So that's all we're measuring here. These are gonna to correspond to contraction events. And we'll talk about those next week. But it directly is a measure of the electrical activity. And because of this, it's clinically re relevant. So we can learn a lot about how the heart, heart is functioning based on how these um, peaks and valleys look. So before, one more thing before I show you the components, I wanna give you a sense of going back to this, how we obtain this information. So this diagram here um, is showing you where you'd have different electrodes on the surface of the skin. And you will do this in lab and the signal is reflecting the direction of the impulse relative to these electrodes. So this here is showing that depending on these three different electrodes, you would get different signals that look very different because it's all relative to where um, that electrode is when it's measuring. So we will look at one example there's different types of EKGs you can do. They have electrodes in different places. We'll just do one um, so you can learn that one. I do want you to be able to understand um, this basic idea here. Um, let me draw this out. So here I've got two different electrodes. One is negative and one is positive. So the electrodes themselves have a charge to them. You can see that on these, these here. Um, and all the EKG is measuring is change in voltage towards positive or away from positive. So um, we're gonna look at millivolts because that's how we measure electricity, even if it's not um, the same as a units as an action potential. If we're going towards a positive, this signal is gonna go up. If we're going, so that's when we go this way. If there's a signal moving across the heart going this way, that signal is going to go down. So a negative to positive is going to be an upward deflection. And a negative, I'm sorry, positive to negative is a downward. And the point of telling you this is just so when we look at those components, you see those upward and downward reflections as movement across the skin and not measuring action potentials inside the neurons. So this may make more sense when we look at the components. So let's do that. Okay, components here, I'm not gonna try to draw a time scale. We'll do that in a separate video. First, just the electrical events that are happening. So this is what an EKG looks like. It is millivolts on this axis here and then time. 
and we're going to have these different bumps happen. Here's our P wave, get a little dip here. And then a big old wave here. So this is the electrical signals, signals as measure across the heart on the skin. Let's label these. This is our P wave. This is going to be depolarization of the atria. Um, then we're going to have our Q, our R, and our S time points here. This is called the QRS complex, big old peak that's um, ventricular depolarization. And again, this is not measuring depolarization of individual cells, but the movement of electricity across the heart. And then we've got our T wave. This is going to be repolarization of the ventricles. So it goes up like that, right? So this is not a going up, but upward deflection does not equal depolarization necessarily of, of anything. In this case, this represents the cells are repolarizing, but that signal is a positive deflection. Okay, let's look at this with a picture drawn by someone else here. This is a little bit more detail on these components. So you know this from the previous video, right? These, um, the intrinsic conduction system. So you know the signal starts in the SA node and that is right here. And we're gonna start an upward deflection as that signal starts to spread across the atria. And the P wave is then what you can see on the EKG when the atria depolarize. There's a delay, remember that, in the, at the AV node? So this is that delay right here. Cool, huh? Before the ventricles contract here, um, depolarize, and then are gonna contract after that. So this is our ventricular excitation. So it fits, right, with our, what we know about the intrinsic conduction system. All it is is visualizing that on a, on a graph that conduction system across the heart. Um, it's not shown on this one, then that this would be repolarizing. The ventricles. The repolarizing of the atria is actually happens in here, but you, it's basically covered up by that QRS complex um, because that signal is so big. Okay, so the EKG is the map of, of the intrinsic conduction system. I've got a nice diagram. Some people like this, it goes a little too fast for me, but this is what's happening, right? This is showing you that map. And you can look at that longer if you want to. I do have a slowed down version as well. So you can see how each of those time points corresponds to a signal here. Now, since I drew on that, it paused. Ah. There it goes. Give you at least one cycle, so you can go back and watch it in the video if you want to. That's the repolarization right there. And we'll, with the valves and everything else is doing, we'll come back to you um, already know about the valves, but tying that in with these electrical signals in terms of events and timing. Okay. Finish this one up. Obviously, second one starts, so the P wave comes after a T wave, right? Here, learning check, label as much as you can. 